burns like a lamb, as if inspired by or trying to actually impersonate Christ, and spoke like a dragon, Satan. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And this is uh, a reference at Revelations 13, 1 and, uh, 11 and 12. Now, this beast claims to actually represent Jesus Christ, the true Lamb of God, but actually it speaks for Satan concerning what people are to worship. Now, in Revelation chapter 17, this beast is also pictured as a fallen woman. I think that's a very common um, depiction, whether you're familiar with the Bible or not, um, of the fallen woman or a harlot. And it says, and uh, I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And this is found at um, Revelation 17, verses 3 through 5. So basically, this fallen woman sits on and guides, okay, the first beast, which is the alliance of those ten kings we've talked about, uh, rulers of nations of, or groups of nations, if you will. And she is the world's chief advocate of Satan's disgraceful doctrines. Now, she artfully preserves, okay, the pagan mysteries, the fundamentals of ancient Babylon's religion, okay, in her traditions and teachings. And she will be a fierce advocate of these ancient religious customs and practices at the end of this age again making them internationally popular and i believe that because we were, we've been talking in episodes about how there has been an increase uh, of seeing these types of practices in witchcraft and sorcery and um, all kinds of things that are considered to be alternate religions if you will so some people may still ask, who is this spiritual harlot? And we see in scripture, it says, And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Okay? And that's in verse 18 of Revelation uh, 17, uh, chapter 17. So the ancient cities of Babylon and Rome control vast empires subjecting many nations and kings to their traditions and culture. Now, prophecy reveals that a modern city will assume a similar role at the end of, of the time of the end, okay? End of days, the last days, however, there's many ways of referring to it. So this city will be powerfully influential in this world's religious, political and economic arenas. By the time the fallen woman, this Babylon the Great, is destroyed by Christ, it will be the case that all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And this particular reference is at Revelation chapter 18, verse 3. So this is a religious power that will influence every single level of our society. For a time, she will be the, considered to be the pace setter for the world. She is the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. We've already spoken of at Revelation 17, 1 through 2. So Satan will employ the traditions and beliefs of this powerful city to deceive the to continue to, because he's still deceiving, right? Uh the world to not to be unrelenting. He doesn't want to give up that power and that influence. Um, it also says in Revelation 17, 15, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues or languages. Okay, so that's what that means. So Satan will also use the leaders of, of these two beasts, 
already referred to already to convince the world